Hello and welcome. My name is Dominic Rama. I'm editor at Gene Publishers. And with me today is a dear guest and friend of Hainless, a pianist and artist who needs no introduction, Marc André Amelin. Bonjour, Marc. Thanks for joining us. Of course, it's a pleasure and a privilege, really. Um, the occasion for a short talk is um, quite an enjoyable one. Uh, this year we celebrate uh, Rachmaninoff's 150th birthday. And Rachmaninoff's music is that uh, what has kept us too busy for the last years. So let's talk about that a bit <laughs> and our collaboration. And come to think of it, um, actually, we uh, celebrate a little uh, anniversary as well, because exactly 10 years ago, I wrote my first email to you and, and asked you if you would like to join our efforts and provide your fingerings. And so you said yes, obviously, and <laughs> here we are. And um, 14 editions later, actually. 14? Okay, I, 14. I, I, I think I lost count. You know, yes, hard. and I counted the pages. Did you know that so far you have provided fingerings for 650 pages of music by Rachmaninoff? Can you imagine that? Well, it's it's been enjoyable from the first page to the last, I can tell you. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, I mean, every every work is special, of course, but uh, the third concerto is is really, to my mind, extra special, you know, because uh, it's really the one that has attracted uh, most young pianists' attention, I think, uh, especially recently. So I, I feel like, uh, in my own way, I'm performing a, a, a useful service, you know, for for uh, for pianists for this particular work. Mm. And uh, the work is really very rich and very complex. Uh, I, it offers a lot of possibilities. It, it suggests a lot of possibilities for fingering. And I'm sure that uh, some other pianists' fingerings will differ markedly from my own. But uh, nevertheless, I felt uh, very honored in offering my, uh, my own solutions. And I hope that uh, um, the, the, they prove to be useful. Yes, I'm, I'm absolutely sure of that. And um, let's uh, not look back only, but look ahead. And um, we have a, a very big project uh, in front of us. Um, our latest project is although the biggest ever, the much-awaited third piano concerto, monumental edition and monumental work, of course. And uh, some months um, you sent me your fingerings and when I opened your email, there was a really pleasant surprise because there was not only the fingerings, but you also sent me a special handwritten appendix. Maybe you can talk about that a bit. Can you explain what you sent me there? Well, certainly. Well, I felt that in uh, quite a number of passages, uh, 13 of them to be exact, because I have the sheet in front of me, uh, the fingerings that I had in mind were too complex to be notated in the usual way with just with numbers or with uh um you call you'd call them a strich or a, a little brackets i guess little, yes like hooks uh, and which, which hand plays what so uh, these passages and um, most of them are very very short maybe a couple of bars they these passages re uh well, ne necessitated renotation and parenthetically, I should add that um, uh, it's good that we have a an extensive performance and recorded history for a work like this, because if it were new, if it were a piece that no one had heard before or never had been before, uh, performed before, I think every pianist on earth would be scared by what are very, very black pages. <laughs> As as Frank Zappa once said, you know, mm -hmm. uh, one of his works is called the Black Page. With lots of lots of notes, really, and uh, I mean every almost every page, especially the way that it's engraved, that it was engraved in the original Woodhide edition, is really crowded. Yeah. And um, I I think that uh, from past experience, I think uh, uh, your typesetting at Henley will attempt to address some of that. I, I think there's every chance that the pages will look less crowded. Am I right? Um, that is correct. And I think that we use uh, like 
30 pages more than the original edition. Well, that's that's great. So you have may maybe more page turns uh, eventually, but I think you, in the end you will play it by heart. And um, so there's no need for turning pages anyway. Uh, well, I, the, it, it, as, as far as the, the learning, the, the music is concerned, I think that the... Uh... The, the music will look a little bit a little bit less scary. I hope so, yeah. Maybe it will almost look easy. <laughs> <laughs> so your review notations, um, maybe you could um, show us uh, an example or what did you exactly do for? Well, uh, one very, very short example is near the beginning of the concerto which in the original, the 16ths that were played by the right hand were played by the left hand and uh, and vice versa. And to me, there was no reason for that to be necessary because the passage can, can sound identically well, mm -hmm. well, better with that, without so much effort. And another example is in the wonderful... Um, middle section, the waltz section of the second movement. Now, I, I fixed it so that there's one more note to play in the left hand uh, for each of those beats and one fewer note to play in the right hand. And it makes, I mean, you're still crossing hands at this point, but um, much more elegantly. And the passage will sound just as clear, if not clearer. Uh, if you played it as Rachmaninoff asked, you would uh, have uh, not triplets but three note figures uh, uh, repeated in the in the right hand, uh, which causes you to uh, causes the left hand to have to jump more, uh, jump higher, and then uh, you you lose uh, some of the line. Yeah, and perhaps some of the speed as well. So uh, uh, this uh, allows you to play the this passage much more seamlessly. Okay. So that and these are just a couple of examples uh, among many. There, there's actually thirteen of them that I I found necessitated renotation. Right, and um, I know there are some pianists who frown a on um, renotating or redistributing nodes between hands um, sometimes because they say, well, the, the composer wrote it like that, so you have to play it like that. Well, Do you think that Rachmaninoff really was such um, a purist or would he have approved of your solution? I mean... I don't know enough yes. <laughs> to, uh, to uh, be able to tell for sure, but I mean... I mean, try to play the fugue of the Hammerklavier Sonata exactly as, as it's written and mm -hmm. see what happens. <laughs> That's all I'll say. <laughs> and there are extreme yeah. examples for, for the few who have played it. I mean, I I, uh, I, I uh, never learned the whole thing, but the, 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 the second sonata by Boulez, for example, I mean, if you play it, as, uh, you can't play it as written, you have to redistribute everything. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess you have to... Uh, as far as composers go, you have to sort of determine it as a case uh, case to case basis, because composers have different feelings about their notation. But um, well, I I can cite it as another example uh, a, a quite non henley composer uh, Francis Poulenc. Uh, sometimes you see either in his songs or his in his piano music uh, respect this fingering scrupulously. <laughs> Whereas nice. I think in every case, there is absolutely no reason why you should, <laughs> <laughs> because another fingering would music would be musically just as good. Um, as long as the music sounds well, mm. then I never, ever, ever have any hesitation anywhere, myself, personally, uh, to uh, redistribute if I need to. And sometimes it just happens on its own mm -hmm. <laughs> without my having to figure it out. I guess it's yeah. a instinctive uh, physical necessity. 
Thank you for those insights. Um, one last question regarding the concerto. Um, there are, you know, two cadenzas for the first movement. Um, one is written in OSEA st um, systems and it's uh, in small print, but actually it was the first one that Rachmaninoff composed. Um, and then later he maybe thought, had second thoughts about uh, this cadenza being too difficult or too too heavy and he re replaced it in, in the printed edition with a um, more um, lyrical let's say um, cadenza uh, yeah. do you or what do you think about those cadenzas do you play both do you prefer one to another or do you I, both uh, are equal remember the, well? first, <laughs> the first couple of times that i performed the, the work i uh and I was already in my late twenties, so I, I didn't learn it as earlier as many of my colleagues have. Uh, I played the the, uh, the 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 heavier one, the bigger one, um, but I came to realize that it really well. I, f I felt like it threw the, uh, the whole movement out of balance, formally, structurally, architecturally. So uh, uh, I've been very happy with the uh, shorter one. Mark, thank you so much for taking your time and uh, having this little talk about the third concerto. And uh, are any Rachmaninoff concertos uh, coming up now for you? Do you play any of those concertos? Yes, yes the second and the third actually are slated oh. this year. So, uh, and um, I, th I think there's a Paganini Rhapsody as well. So if you're anywhere close uh, to our public uh, and um, audience, if you have the chance to, to listen to Marc-André playing, don't miss it. So bye-bye, thank you, and see you in, uh, soon. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Dominique. Bye.